22. Now, I'm very excited because uh, joining me right opposite now is uh, Michel Jordi. Morning, Michel. Good morning, everybody. Morning. How are you doing this morning? Oh, I'm doing really great. Uh, got up very early this morning. Looking right. forward to this program. And as usual, did my early morning exercises. You've done that. Uh, you've, done, you've done your exercises already. I haven't done my exercises for this year, I have to admit. <laughs> but oh. anyway, I'm, I'm glad that you have. For me, it's a daily habit like brushing my teeth. Right. Well, that's good. That's good. It's a habit I wish I could get into. Now, Michel Jordi. Now, Michel, um, if, if, if you were sitting here on, a, on a, a, let's say, a, a, a radio station in Switzerland, which is in the normal national Swiss languages, everybody would know who you are. Uh, however, I will actually say, I think for a lot of our audience, uh, maybe people need to, 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 let's say, be a little bit more educated about who you are, because you're an extremely, extremely well-known Swiss entrepreneur, businessman, and of course, in the past, you've been a professional sportsman as well. So uh, there's a lot of things you've been doing in Switzerland. So let's just start off um, by asking, what... what what do you think you're best known at? Probably your watches, I would have thought, the things that you're best known for at the moment. Well, uh, so Kratos said, uh, to be is to do. Right. And I'm one of those guys who uh, try to do a lot of things. And as you said correctly, when I was a kid, I was a very, very passionate sportsman, right. skiing, uh, football. And uh, I started uh, my independence very early, launched my first company at the age of 23, went to Japan, made a joint venture with a large Japanese watch company there. And in 1986, I launched my first watch product, which was Le Clip, the watch to be worn everywhere except on the wrist. And I remember that where you pinned it on your, on your clothes or something yes, like that. You could you? pin yes. it on your clothes everywhere. And right. I remember on the launch in New York, Andy Warhol was a really great fan of my watches. And then after that, um, I start. I launched a product for the 700 years anniversary of Switzerland, which was the Swiss Ethno Watch, Swiss Ethno Fever, which became a really unbelievable success in Switzerland mainly, but also internationally. We had in the 90s and early 2000s in Switzerland 90% of brand awareness in Switzerland, which means 9 out of 10 Swiss knew the brand. Right, the Michel Jordi brand. I mean, it all follows your name, doesn't it? So so it's, it's, it's something that uh, you've worked very hard at and, and making sure your profile uh, remains strong. Because I, I have to say as well, I've been, you know, looking through your past... Uh, your, your success, there have been ups and downs in your success in the past, hasn't there? You're absolutely right. And uh, actually, I can say that uh, I failed my way to the top. <laughs> because with every, every defeat, I mean, uh, I started out for, uh, on a much higher level for the next venture. And uh, since I was a passionate sportsman, I must say that uh, when I was a kid, learning to lose was very important. And it helped me in my professional career. Okay, so you wouldn't. So when things got tough for you, you didn't let that hold you back. It didn't put you off. You thought, "I'm just going to get up and go again, but stronger." Yeah, Confucius said, "Our greatest glory lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall." And I think that is so important. And this, I also believe that. Every uh, human being has kind of a mission in his life. And I talk about this in my book, Ignite That Spark. Yes, now you have got your book here, Ignite That Spark. Now, firstly, we should point out it is written in English. Yes, it's written in English because uh, I think entrepreneurship uh, is international and uh, there are most of the big business schools all teach in English. And I wanted to attract immediately a very, very wide English audience. That's why I decided to put the first edi- make the first edition in the English language. Okay, so the book is called Ignite That Spark. It also comes with a song, which we'll be playing later. Um, but uh, the, the subtitle is Ten Commandments of Entrepreneurship. And then it describes you, uh, Michelle, as a serial disruptor. In, in what way would you, would you describe yourself as a disruptor? Yeah, because I always try to do things differently. Right. I mean, uh, Jack Trout uh, wrote the book in the 70s, Differentiate or Die. And I think today in this such a high, highly competitive uh, economic uh, field, where everything goes so fast, you have to differentiate yourself or you die. 
And so that is why I became a disruptor, kind of. Uh, I always wanted to do things very, very different. That's why Le Clip, the first watch, to be right. worn everywhere except on the wrist. Then the Swiss Ethno watch, which took the Swiss folk watches or folk seams into a fashion area, which uh, nobody understood at the beginning, and calling it Ethno, because a lot of people at that time, they related Ethno to Africa, but right. this was Swiss Ethno. So it was, uh, I was kind of the initiator of Swissness. And, uh, uh, so what sort of year was that when you launched the Swiss Ethno? The what, Ethno what was, was uh, for the 700 years uh, anniversary in 1991 for Switzerland. 1991, right. And, uh, and that, was, uh, that proved to be a big success. And uh, would you say, I mean, uh, we've got Swatch, of course. Would you say that, uh, that you perhaps laid the path for Swatch as well? Uh, no, sorry, uh, I cannot take the glory for, for <laughs> of other people. Uh, the swatch was before the clip, but uh, I think it was maybe an initiator and showed showed a certain way how to go. Right, I and mean, but it made it made Swiss watches, which were before then. I mean, Swiss watches were known as being uh, very elaborate, but also very expensive. But you made the watch uh, more affordable, but yet keeping the uh, the quality and the desirability of the watch. Value for money, value perceived for money. value, and I think we offered the fantastic quality for a very reasonable price. Okay, now we now so we mentioned that um, Michelle's got the book out, Ignite That Spark: Ten Commandments of Entrepreneurship. We'll have a look uh, what's in the book and little hints and tips in that book coming up for you in just a couple of moments. Thirty-three minutes past nine. Got a real Swiss superstar in the studio with me this morning, Michelle Jordi, a very well-known entrepreneur. Watch watches, of course, uh, with a Michelle Jordi brand. Uh, but Michelle, we were talking earlier on about uh, your entrepreneur spirit and the fact that, uh, you know, you don't let anything get you down. You keep going all the time because there have been some, you know, ups and downs throughout your life. Um, and you've got a book out, Ignite That Spark. It's all about entrepreneurship. I've got a copy or a few copies, in fact, uh, of that book to give away. If you'd like to be in the draw for that, just send me the word spark as an email or an SMS, and uh, we'll put one in the post for you, okay? Well, I mean, if you get drawn out. <laughs> We've got a few copies. Uh, on the SMS, start your message off with WRS, write down Spark, send to 939, or email studio at worldradio.ch. Ideal Christmas present as well. Ignite that spark. Now, Michelle, we are talking about uh, the book, but uh, also the whole book process, because you wrote your autobiography and then this book, uh, but it all followed a very nasty accident you had. Yes, that's correct. Uh, it was in uh, late October 2014. I ran uh, down the, the Jura Mountains uh, on my bicycle and I made a very severe fall uh, mm. near Genolier. I was in the coma, woke up in the uh, emergency room at the Neon Hospital uh, a few hours later. And then when I was lying there on my hospital bed, I looked at the ceiling and I heard this voice this very, very strong voice from my inside of myself, Michelle. That's it. I think it's time to do something else. Oh, really? So you decided then to um, to, to 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 write your autobiography? No, I I, I said to myself, hey, finally time to uh, enjoy life and right. do something else, and you know, and uh, go around, uh, travel the world with my wife. Until my daughter Kim came along and said, well, Dad, now it's time to write your biography. Right. And for me, this was a nightmare. I mean, I'd never written a book and uh, had absolutely no interest or idea to write the book. But she insisted so strongly that in the end, uh, I wrote the first chapter, which she thought was not that bad. The second chapter, and suddenly the whole book was born within a year. And we launched it in 2017 at uh, November. But uh, there was another uh, hick in that book. Uh, suddenly, it became over 500 pages. And the editor said to me, well, look, uh, Michel, this is an autobiography. This should not be a, a guidebook or a manual for entrepreneurs. Right. And so in spring of this year, it kind of uh, mocked me. and said, oh, God, there's so much knowledge in there of these, these 200 pages I had to cut. I have to do something about it. And that is in the, I decided in April that are going to write a book for entrepreneurs, the Ten Commandments. It immediately came into my mind, these are going to be the Ten Commandments of entrepreneurship and igniting the spark in young entrepreneurs. And I wrote that book in six months, and I must say thanks a lot to the help and assistance 
of my daughter, Kim. OK, so thanks to Kim, we've got to uh, ignite that spark. Ten Commandments of Entrepreneurship. So let's just uh, go through, I mean, uh, fr- from those ten, we haven't got time to do all ten, but from those ten, what would you say are the most Im- important little snippets of advice for anyone who wants to, um, to strike out alone and, uh, and, and start their own business? Well, the most important one is vision. That's for right. me, uh, commandment number one. Everything, all my ventures start with a vision. And if you don't have a vision, you, if you don't know where you're going, I think it's useless to, to get started. But uh, then, of course, there are other things I call the first four commandments. It's like a lucky clover. So this the first is, of course, vision. Number two, I think, is guts. For me, everything comes from my guts. It's the energy. It's the feeling. It's, it, am I on the right track? So I listen to my guts very much. Then is uh, definitely timing is an important factor. Uh, uh, research by a large uh, American venture capital group has shown that 42% of startups fail because of bad timing. Yes, bad timing. Just, just in the, not, not quite. Perhaps a bit too early to market, or a bit too late, perhaps for something like that. Yeah, I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen where it's just not, not quite the right time. But as you say, nothing, nothing would happen if you actually don't. Uh, when you sit down and you think this is what I want to do, if you know exactly what you're going to do and where you'd like to take it, you just need to have that clear path in your head, don't you? Yes, it's very important. And also uh, what I realized is that uh, everything which you cannot put on paper cannot be realized. It's important to dream dream big, to see big, but in the end you have to put it down on paper. Because once you start to write, that's why I also talk about I'm a strong believer of the business plan. But when I say a strong believer of the business plan, it doesn't mean computing figures for the next five years or so. It is the process. A business plan is a thinking process to think, how can I take this product from idea, from vision to market? And this is kind of what I'm trying to explain all those different processes in my book. Do you think there's a, certainly in Switzerland, do you think there's a, there's a problem with perhaps um, a lack of entrepreneurship? Or do you think that Switzerland is a great place to be an entrepreneur? I think it's probably one of the greatest places to be because uh, we have a lot of institutions. We have a lot of uh, schools. There are startup hubs in, in every large city in Switzerland, larger city in Switzerland. And there is a lot of freedom from the administrative point of view. It's very easy to start your own company. So I think uh, every young entrepreneur today should give it a chance because... Uh, what have you the, got to lose, frankly? Exactly. If, the, you, if you're young, then uh, yeah, certainly give it a go. I wish I had when I was younger. To you're be absolutely honest. right. That's what, what I'm trying to, to say. You start as young as possible. When, when you're a young adult, you don't have any responsibility directly. Right. You have no family. Yeah. And you have nothing to lose, as you say. And the only thing you can do is learn. Because with, I realized that, as I said, with every failure, I learned something. And I also learned something about myself and how to get tough and maybe to be more careful the next time. Okay, right now, if you'd like to win a copy of Michelle's book, it's called Ignite That Spark. Then all you need to do is send me the word spark as an SMS or an email. We'll post it to you. Start your message off with WRS, write down spark, send to 939 or email studio at worldradio.ch. And uh, I've got a few copies. Michelle's given us a few copies to give away. So uh, if you'd like to get one of those, then as I say, just send us the word spark. Uh, Michelle, it's the only book I know that's come with a song. (laughs) <laughs> so uh, we've, got, we've got to have a song for you, uh, which is called Ignite That Spark. Just very briefly, Michelle, tell us about the song. Well, this is another amazing story. And there's one thing I wrote right in the book. It's about luck. Right. I call it Match Point and the Match Point after the movie by Woody Allen. I don't know whether you've seen that movie. It's a very, very uh, interesting and intriguing movie. Uh, so actually, is it... Is Is it it, uh, destiny, fate, or luck which decides over the course of your life? We don't know. We don't know. And uh, so so there's there's, there's the the song itself. Who's it by? Who's who's performing the song? We should mention that. It's by Abby and Chris Eaton. Abby and Chris Eaton. And uh, it's called Ignite That Spark. Sorry, sorry. Oh, I've just started it. Yes, carry on. Maybe I just would like to mention about the song, uh, about this destiny. We met with friends whom we haven't seen for over 10 years in July of this year, uh, Francesca. 
uh, and her husband, uh, Christian. And I spoke about uh, the book. They want to know, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm writing a new book, Ignite That Spark. And she said, it's just like this spontaneously. I'm going to write a song for it. And she did. And she did. Okay, and here it is. It's your time. And that's the Jackson 5 there. And Santa Claus is uh, coming to town. Uh, Michel Jordi, uh, Swiss entrepreneur, is still with me in the studio. And Michel, we've been talking about Ignite That Spark. Now, actually, many thanks for all your uh, entries coming in for your free copy of Ignite That Spark. All you need to do is send me the word spark as an SMS or email. Be in the draw. Plenty of people are interested. But uh, if you'd like to buy a copy, then it's uh, Pio uh, right now uh, in the bookshop, Pio. And from next week, it will be available on Amazon. Uh, so uh, if you want a copy of Ignite That Spark by Michel Jordi, The Ten Commandments of Entrepreneurship. Now, actually, Michel, we were just talking about the fact just a moment ago, Christmas is coming up, obviously. Um, this would be an ideal book to give to uh, a young person who's perhaps you know, leaving university shortly or still wondering about what to do. This book should, I'm sure, well, would give them uh, that a little extra motivation to go off and do something for themselves, which you would be a full supporter of, wouldn't you? Yes, of course. But I think it's really an excellent book for aspiring entrepreneurs. Right. And I would dare to take the risk that anybody who doesn't feel that he gets his value back, I will refund him to 19 <laughs> francs 90 because I think really it's, it'll be worthwhile. And, you know, actually, I think we live in a very, very blessed period, I mean, area. You can look at the things from a positive or negative point of view. Right. Then you see all this uh, t- uh, digital uh, transformation we're going through. But I think, actually, when you look back in, uh, in the Middle Ages, people were farmers and had a piece of land right. to make their living. Today, the kids, they have their computer, which is their field or their farm today. And they can make a living with their computer, and in the future, I think we're going th- through enormous transformation and changes. And working from home or from your favorite place, you don't have to travel. You reduce global warming right. and pollution. So I could only encourage anybody, start your own business, a smartphone and a laptop will do. No, I think it's true, isn't it? I mean, uh, that's an amazing tool and the amazing ability to actually get a global audience for your proposed product uh, straight away on on the internet. Um, I would like to ask you, you obviously, Michelle, you're obviously very passionate about this and uh, obviously I'm sure many people will find you, uh, um, you know, find you very inspiring and will, you know, will take a lot of what you're saying on board to, to make, give them that drive to go and do something else. But, in your past, who has been perhaps the person that may have inspired you, perhaps a, perhaps a few years ago? Someone that, who you thought, mm, yes, I want to I be like that person, or I, I think that person's doing great things. Well, uh, I started my, my first company, my first startup at the age of 23. I went to Japan with $10,000 in my pocket, and they knocked on the door of a large Japanese conglomerate employing 3,000 people. And I told to this, uh, the Japanese chairman, you know, I'm very young, I have little experience, but I have a dream. Right. He didn't let me finish. He said to me, Jordi san, you must have a big dream. <laughs> and, you know, I thought we would talk about five or ten year plans. This was in the 70s. The guy spoke about the 21st century, and I can say that he ignited that spark in me already so many years back, and this is now, I think, my mission, what I would like to try to do. I would like to ignite the spark in all the young people, any aspiring entrepreneur, to break free and start on your own path. And he was, he was the one that really made you realize you, it was the right path for you to, to, to head off and, and, and do it yourself. Yes, absolutely. He was an amazing person. And he guided me, he helped me in everything. Of course, we didn't talk about uh, cash or money so far. In the, this is also in the book. It's commandment number 10. It's about cash flow, how important it is, of course. It is. Cash is your oxygen. Right. And when you run out of oxygen, you're dead. Right. 
Okay. So keep, keep that load. in mind. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you I'm aware of that one. Yes. Okay, so uh, Ignite That Spark. If you'd like uh, a copy of Michelle's book, Ignite That Spark, then uh, drop us a line. I've got a few to give away today. Uh, send me the word spark. It's an SMS or an email right now. And uh, then you can buy it, though. You can buy it in Pio right now. And from next week, it will be on Amazon. Ignite That Spark. You can find it quite easily. Michelle's already Now, Michelle, it's been an absolute delight having you in the studio today. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, I wish you the best of luck with your book. Oh, one more thing. Yes, yes. I have one last thing What's to uh, broadcast to all the audience, to everybody. Right. I want to give them a great gift or just an awareness of a gift. Right. That every year and starting from January the 1st, 2019, they will have 8,760 hours available. A gift of 8,760 hours. Make the best out of that time. Thank you very much. Happy New Year. <laughs> Thank you very much, Michel. That was Michel Jordi. His book, Ignite That Spark, in Pio right now on Amazon next week. But like I say, if you'd like a copy, we've got a few to give away. Drop me a line that says the word spark on the SMS. Start your message off with WRS. Write it down, send to 939 or email studio at worldradio.ch. Michel, thanks very much indeed. Thank you.